Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So I was about to record a video about Sister Wife star Cody Brown when I jumped over on the Ashley Realities Roundup uh, website and 13 seconds ago, she put up an article about Josh Duggar's sentencing date. He has a date that has been set for which he will be sentenced for his uh, receiving and possessing CSAM. So I told you guys from jump, from the moment that he was found guilty, that as soon as we knew a date, I would hop on here and let you guys know. So I only read the first part of this article and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna hop on, record a video, read through the article and then kind of give my first reaction to this news on the video. So that's what we're gonna do, you guys. Um, I'm gonna link the article in the description box below. It says Josh Duggar's sentencing hearing date set for April. Former 19 Kids and County star will serve at least five years in prison. Josh Duggar will soon learn his fate. The U.S. District Court announced on Tuesday, today, February 15th, that Josh Duggar, who was found guilty of receiving and possessing CSAM back in December, will be sentenced for his crimes, will be sentenced for his crimes on April 5th at 9.30 a.m. So we have about a month and a half before Josh Duggar finds out uh, how long he will have to spend in prison for receiving and possessing CSAM. Now, bear in mind, he has filed an appeal. Um, they are actually trying to shoot for an acquittal as well. I don't think that's going to take place. Um, but right now, we do have a date for when he will be sentenced, and that's April 5th. The sentencing hearing will take place in the same courtroom where Josh's trial was held back in the end of November, early December. There was a uh, pre-sentencing investigation report that was filed as a sealed document just a few days ago on February 11th. And in this report, in this pre-sentencing investigation report, there's a victim impact statement. However, the documents are sealed, so we don't know if the victim impact statement is coming from someone that was in the maybe one of the videos that Josh had downloaded, or if this was someone that Josh had victimized himself, uh, maybe like one of the sisters. Um, both, obviously, if it's someone from the videos, Josh victimized them even more by downloading it, or if it was someone Josh physically himself victimized. Uh, we don't know because it's sealed and the only uh, people that have access to this document would be the court and the attorney. So we don't know, but that's interesting because I didn't know that before. Um, I was not aware that there was any victim impact statements related to this case. We know that Josh has victims. He molested his sisters. Also, the children that was a part of the videos that he downloaded. But this is the first that I'm hearing about a victim impact statement. And because it's sealed, we won't know who it's from. Now, at the sentencing, Josh will be allowed to speak if he chooses. He can ask the judge for leniency or make a, a statement. Since being found guilty, Josh has been sitting in a Washington County jail. He has not been allowed any in-person visitors, but we do know that he has been burning up the jail's video visitation system, virtually visiting with his wife, Anna, and other family members very frequently. I think by like mid-January, he had already over like a hundred visits between him and Anna. So they speak, it seems like on a daily basis. In December, legal analysis and attorney Emily D. Baker told the Ashley that while Josh was charged and convicted of both possessing and receiving CP, the possessing is a lesser but included, but included charge that is essentially absorbed into the receiving charge. It makes sense because to receive something is to be in possession of it. So it's kind of the same thing. I get that. She also explained why it's significant that prosecutors went with the receiving charge rather than the possessing charge. The receiving charge carries a five-year minimum mandatory sentence. Possessing CSAM does not have a mandatory minimum and is a lesser crime. So had they went for possessing, um, he could have could have got away with maybe a year or two or maybe just like probation. I don't even know. It's a, a lesser crime and it does not have a mandatory minimum sentence. Whereas the um, receiving charge, five years minimum. We know that Josh Duggar will absolutely positively be sentenced to at least five years in prison because of the charge. 
Emily Baker also stated that Josh's sentence must be between five to 20 years and no more and no less. So another thing that we know is it's not going to be any more than 20 years. Emily stated uh, he was never eligible to be sentenced on both charges. It was always 20 years max, depending on which charge he was convicted of. They could not be added together so that it's 20 years per charge. And that's what there were so many misunderstandings, even myself included. We heard 20 years per charge with two charges. So we all thought 40 years. A lot of us did. Anyone that doesn't know about the law, you know, um, obviously Emily knew better, but I did not. I'm hearing 20 years per charge. Two charges equals 40 years, right? But thankfully, we have people that know better. They can break it down for us. That is actually, even though there's two charges, um, he can only be given 20 years because one charge is absorbed into the other charge. Yes. The top max sentence has always been 20 years. If he had been convicted of possessing CSAM only, there's no mandatory minimum sentence. So legally, a judge could have sentenced him to no prison time and or only probation. But because he was convicted of possessing of the possessing charge, there's that five-year minimum. So he has to go to prison for at least five years and up to 20. She makes it make sense. And because Josh is being sentenced in federal court, he will be required to serve the majority of his sentence. In the federal system, you do not get as much credit for time served, for time that you serve. So you serve more of your sentence. Instead of serving, say, 50% of the sentence like you do in most states, you serve 80%. So the sentence tends to look lower in federal court, but you're actually serving more time. The Ashley previously reported that Josh and his legal team filed a motion last month to get him a new trial. In the filings, his attorney argued that there's no evidence that Josh viewed the illegal material found on his computer. However, the prosecutors, they are saying otherwise. They filed a response and I just, I'm actually uploading that video right now about the prosecutors, their response to them filing for a new trial. The prosecutor stated that the evidence of the defendant's guilt is clear and overwhelming. They also shot down Josh's claim that he should get a new trial or be acquitted because he says he never personally viewed the CSAM. So the response, it reads, the government did not need to provide evidence that he personally viewed the material to convict him of receiving and possessing CP. It only had to prove that he knew the material was of minors engaging in sexually explicit conduct, which he would know that even if he didn't press play because the thumbnails themselves show underage girls in uh, sexual, committing sexual acts. Judge Timothy Brooks signed the sentencing order today on February 15th, giving the following procedures and deadlines. If any party wishes to file a sentencing memorandum, it must be filed of record no later than 14 days prior to sentencing. A response brief, if desired, is due seven days thereafter. If the sentencing is continued and any party wishes to submit a supplemental sentencing memorandum, such will be due no later than 14 days prior to the new sentencing date, and any response will be due seven days thereafter. Government and or defense motions seeking a traditional guideline departure must be in writing and filed no later than four business days prior to sentencing, and no later than three business days prior to sentencing. Council must confer and advise the court via email as to any substantive PSR objections, which remain outstanding and require court resolution. As to each such objection, counsel are to state in the email whether an evidentiary hearing will be required, the number of witnesses each party may call, and the approximate length of time necessary for the evidentiary portion of the hearing. So I guess kind of like how I don't know if you guys watched uh, Jeffrey Paschal from 90 Day Fiance at his hearing. It was almost like they had like a mini uh, court session. They brought up his accuser. They brought up other witnesses um, who also had experience with Jeffrey being abusive to them. So at this sentencing hearing, I guess what they're saying is like, if you need witnesses, we need to know that. Um, if there needs to be an evidentiary hearing beforehand, we need to know that. So that's what the Ashley just put up, you guys. April 5th at 9.30 a.m. in the same courtroom where his trial was held. 
he will be sentenced to at least five years in prison, no more than 20. You guys leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you guys think? Do you guys think the judge will give him the max, the 20 years? Or do you guys think the judge is going to be lenient on him and maybe give him only five years? Or do you guys think it could be somewhere in the middle? Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.